I was sore at myself for coming all the way out to Pasadena on a day like that, just to see about a case. And how I hate summer winds. They come in suddenly off the Mojave Desert and you can taste sand for a week. I knew it was the voice of the girl on the phone that had got me. And I was reminding myself how often your ears play a dirty trick on your eyes. But this time, there was no letdown. Mr. Marlowe? Yes. I'm so terribly glad you could come. Well, I'm beginning to feel better about it myself. Well, just having you here makes me sure everything's going to be all right. <laughs> you have even more confidence in my ability than I have. Where'd you hear about me? Oh, uh, I, I didn't. I picked your name up out of a phone book. <laughs> well, I'm usually not so lucky. Oh, neither am I, Mrs. Murdoch. Oh, I'm not Mrs. Murdoch. I'm Miss Davis, her secretary. Well, I hope you're not disappointed. I'm disappointed you're not my client. But the miss makes up for it. I'll tell Mrs. Murdoch you're here. Oh, but first I'd better tell you a little bit about her. Oh, sure, by all means. I'm in no rush. Well, you may find her a little difficult and rather eccentric. Yeah? Do you? Oh, no, I understand her, but there are people who don't. Uh, they don't know the trouble she's had, Mr. Marlowe. They don't realize how wonderful and generous she is underneath. I see. What does she want a private detective for? I think she'd prefer to tell you that herself. I just wanted to make sure you wouldn't judge her too harshly. Now, there's something I'd like to make sure of, too. Are you around here all the time? I mean, if I take the case, will I see you? That should depend on you, Mr. Marlowe. You look like a man of initiative. What's he here for? Why is she sent for a detective? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that, Leslie. Your mother wouldn't like it. I have a right to know. Tell me. Leslie, don't. Let me go, please. Uh. You're Marlowe, aren't you? I've just seen my mother. I'm afraid we've put you to some slight trouble for nothing. She's decided not to employ you or anybody, for that matter. How much do we owe you? Nothing, Mr. Murdoch. Mrs. Murdoch will see you now. Thanks. You must have forgotten to tell your mother she didn't want to see me. Right in there. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Marlowe. Sit in that chair, please. And don't light that cigarette. I'm asthmatic. My doctor prescribes pork for my asthma. Since it's a medicine, I'm not offering you any. It's all right. Now, what's your trouble? Something's been taken from this house, and I want it back. Why don't you go to the police? Because I don't wish anyone arrested. You know who took it? Yes, I do, but I don't intend to tell you. Well, before we go any further, perhaps I'd better tell you that your son tried to get rid of me just now. Why? I'm not interested in discussing my son's motives with you, Mr. Marlowe. Well, have it your way. What's been taken? A coin. A rare gold coin called the Brasher Doubloon. A what? The Brasher Doubloon. It's a collector's item worth at least $10,000, probably more. It's a mint specimen. There are only two of them in the whole country. The Smithsonian Institute has the other. Where was it taken from? From that safe in there. May I see inside? Marlowe! Mm. Who besides yourself has the combination? Only my secretary, Miss Davis, and my son. Yes, Mrs. Murdoch. Open the safe for Mr. Marlowe. You're a coin collector, Mr. Murdoch? My late husband was. Marlowe, bring me the tray from which the brush of the balloon was taken. Wait outside, please. What did the kid do? Twist your arm? Mrs. Murdoch will hear you. Why do you have to take that stuff from him? Mr. Marlowe, please. What's the matter, Murdoch? Can't you find it? She's got it.
Shall I leave it here? Yes. And close the door on your way out. Just a minute, Merle. You better make out a check for Mr. Marlowe. What do you charge for your services? Uh, if I take the case, $25 a day and expense it. Uh, I see. And how much of a retainer do you expect? Uh, $100 will hold me. I should hope it would. All right, Merle. Make out a check for $100 payable to Mr. Philip Marlowe. And keep your mouth shut about it. Mrs. Murdoch, I think you know that I never talk about your affairs. Well, I just wouldn't. Not for the world, and I don't... Does this tell you anything? That's the only one that's missing? The only one. All the trays were checked in my presence after I discovered my loss. When was that? Day before yesterday. A man named Elisha Morningstar, coin dealer, telephoned and asked me if the Brasher de Bloom were for sale. I told him if he were a numismatist of any repute, he would know that it wasn't. I see. What did he say to that? And he asked if he might see the de Bloom, and when I told him no, he laughed and hung up. Naturally, that roused my curiosity. And I went to look at the coin. It wasn't there. Elijah Morningstar, eh? His office is in the Belfont building in downtown Los Angeles. <coughs> there you are, and I hope you're worth it. To tell you the truth, I expected an older man, someone more intelligent looking. I'm wearing a disguise. So you don't think your son's eagerness to get rid of me has any bearing on the case? Mr. Marlowe, as I've already told you, your job is merely to get the doubloon back. If you'll handle this matter for me, you'll handle it in my way. Sorry, that's not the way I work, Mrs. Murdoch. If I have to do only what you want me to do, I can't take the case. Indeed, and how do you work? First of all, I insist that my clients tell me everything. And then I handle things my way. It's known far and wide as Marlowe's muddled method. Good day. Nothing is around this house, as far as I can see. What sort of hold have these people got on you, anyway? Oh, really, Mr. Marlowe? Do you have to find deep, dark motives and sinister plots everywhere? Just because we have a little problem to clear up? Don't you ever run across any normal people in your work? Once in a while. My standards are pretty high. For instance, it doesn't seem quite normal to me when a girl like you suddenly goes to pieces because the old dame in there raised her voice. Well, she likes to be treated that way, that's all. I told you she was eccentric. And what about the kid? Now, don't tell me you play straight to him just to build up his ego. That's already been done. Leslie's a little strange, too. His mother loves him so much she spoiled him. In other words, everybody in this case is off balance except you. And you, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, I'm not in this case. I just told Mrs. Murdoch I wasn't going to take it. But I forgot to give this back to her. Well, you mustn't. You've got to take it. Sorry. Would it make any difference if I told you it was important to me? Is it? Yes, it's terribly important. It means everything to me, literally everything. Why? Did you take the doubloon? I can't tell you that. I mean, I don't know. I see. There's just an ordinary little problem to be cleared up here. You're a perfectly normal girl. You just don't happen to remember whether or not you stole a $10,000 coin. But getting it back means literally everything to you. Now, you weren't thinking of shooting someone, were you, Miss Davis? The reason I walked out on Mrs. Murdoch was because she wasn't being frank with me. You're not cooperating any more than she did. I'm sorry. I want to help. That wasn't meant as a pass. Not an out and out one, anyway. I know. It's just that I don't like to have men touch me. Well, in that case, you better do something about your appearance and that perfume you use. Night of bliss. You just can't seem to make up your mind, can you, Miss Davis? I should have said I wasn't used to being touched. It's a phobia, I guess. Oh, sure, well, sure. Well, that doesn't mean I wouldn't like to get over it. I think I can help you there. 
Come here. Don't worry. We'll take it very slowly. See? There's nothing to it. About six lessons from now, you ought to be done fine. Does that mean you'll take the case? Both cases. Yours and Mrs. Murdoch's. Merle! Now, look, you don't have to act in here. She can't see you. Tell her I'm on the payroll. And I'll be back for another lesson. taste in my mouth all the way back to my office in Hollywood. Part of it was the dust and part of it was the setup in the Murdoch house. The girl was what bothered me most. I couldn't figure the switches she'd pulled. Rule one for private investigators. Always deposit retainer before client changes mind. You want to see me? Yeah. Have a chair. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of dump the Shamus hangs out in. Are you here on business or just slumming? Both. I got a case for you. Thanks. I've got one. You did have one. Now you've got a new one. Who are you? My name is Eddie Prue. I represent Vince Blair, owner of the Lucky Club. Well, you tell your boss I'm busy right now. Vince said I was to tell you. He'll pay more than you're getting out of the Pasadena job. You certainly made nice time out here. Or if you'd rather... Just take a $200 retainer. I like the case I'm on. Hmm? Must be a lot of electricity in the air. If a shamus prints down $200. Maybe I'll be down to see him later. I think it might be better if you come down to see him sooner. Look. I've been doing my own thinking for some time now, and I'm still around. How about running out and seeing Mr. Blair now? <laughs> Why not? After all, I'm not being paid to gunfight with strangers. I just hate having guns pointed at me. Must you go? Just lay off the Murdoch setup if you want to stay in business. You know, it's a hard habit to break, taking a case that happened to appeal to me. But it's been very nice meeting you. I phoned Morningstar and went to his office. It wasn't much of an office. Run down, dirty, in a fire trap of a building near Skid Row. Just the kind of place a crook might look for a fence. Come in. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Marlowe. I phoned you. Oh, yes, Mr. Marlowe. Uh, something about a gold coin, you said. That's right. The brasher doubloon, Mr. Morningstar. Oh, yes, the brasher doubloon. An early American coin. Extremely interesting and valuable. Yeah? Why? Because it's rare. And because it has a 
romantic and violent history. It has. I hadn't heard. Yes. First, the man who coined it was murdered and robbed through the treachery of a female. And since then, at least seven other owners of the coin have come to abrupt, unhappy ends. <laughs> Wouldn't that tend to drag down the price a little? Oh, no. On the contrary. A history of violence attached to an odd object makes the more fanatic type of collector all the more eager to own it. Now, Mr. Morningstar, tell me about somebody trying to sell the brasher to Bloom to you. Oh. Oh, did somebody try to sell it to me? Yes. Well, now, why would they do that? Because they need the money, and they didn't want too many questions asked. Now, who brought you the coin, Mr. Morningstar? Perhaps I'm not at liberty to say, Mr. Marlowe. If you don't, I'll go to the police and tell them that you're dealing in stolen property. Are you threatening me, Mr. Marlowe? Yes. I was offered the coin ostensibly for sale. But I thought at the time I was probably just expected to appraise it or to certify its genuineness. I told the person it was genuine and that I would give $2,000 for it. Mrs. Murdoch says it's worth $10,000. I am not in business for my health. Do you know where to find this person? Yes. All right, who is it? I am not at liberty to say without the person's consent. Well, get their consent and call me. Or tomorrow you can tell the police without the person's consent. Hello. Florence Apartments. Will you call Mr. George Anson to the phone, please? No, oh, he doesn't. No. No message. Whoever this Anson was, I was sure of one thing. He couldn't know any less about where the coin was than I did. The Florence Apartments was a rooming house on Bunker Hill, which used to be the choice place to live in Los Angeles. Nowadays, people live there because they haven't got any choice. Somebody, Mac? I know where to find him, thanks. Anson? Anson? Oh, I hate to find a stiff. A private detective has to work within an area roughly bounded by the law. Murder squeezes that area down to where you either can't operate or you have to take chances $25 a day aren't worth. I 
got into this thing on account of a pretty face. The ancient Trojans were sucked into a 10-year war for the same reason, but they didn't regret it any more than I did. My first notion was to blow. Then I remember the manager had seen me come in. You the manager? Yeah. Mr. Anson. 204. I was up there. He's not in. What should I do? Lay an egg? If you ask me in, you can be Woody sitting down. Feed it up, busy. Go on, take the ass. Scrap, push you off. Five bucks. When you say so. Hey, what goes on here? Yeah, it looks like the place has been robbed. Yeah, it sure does. Okay, bud. And don't try any funny business. Just stay right where you are. Well, shot in the chest with a very small caliber gun and a soft nose bullet. And then about two hours. Hands and face cold, the body still warm. No rigor. The sap to something hard, probably a gun before being shot. Well, my boys will have them out of here in a few minutes. Very simple case. Well, you heard what the coroner said. Very simple case. I'm glad of that, because the hard ones are a lot of work. Well, now, since it's so simple, which one of you did it? Not me. I haven't even got a gun on me. He might have had one on him two hours ago. I haven't been in the building an hour altogether. He saw me come in. He saw you come in this time. What about the fingerprint, Spangler? So far, all answers. And one of the guys. Yeah, the other guy is me. Nobody could be as dumb as you act. Nobody ain't. You beat it downstairs. I'll call you if I need you. Let's go in here where it's quiet. You know something, Marlo? You and I are going to get along. Hey, that's fine. I'm all for it. Part of your story sticks in my craw, Marlo. And I don't like your trying to make the manager think you hadn't been in here. Why should I get involved in a murder that's none of my business? Murder is everybody's business. This one is maybe yours more than anybody else's. Let's see what you got in your pockets. Uh -uh. All right, that does it. Take him down to headquarters and hold him as a material witness. And see what he's got on him. Okay, if that's the way you want to play. Who's Elisha Morningstar? Friend of mine in the Belfont building. Coin dealer. Those are to my garage, office, and apartment. What's this for? Golf clubs. Check them there this morning so I wouldn't have to leave them in that car all day. Oh. Stick your arms out. Now, can I go? You know something, Marlo, you're smart. But don't try to be too smart. All right, I'll try to be just smart enough. Long Beach Loan for Willowbrook, Wilmington, Compton, Dominguez Junction, and Long Beach. Leaving at 622. It'll be two bits. On track D, train for Willowbrook, Compton, Dominguez Junction, Dolores, Watson. I figured I was probably looking at the brush or doubloon, but somehow it didn't send me. I guess I'm not the collector type. All I wanted to know was whether this was the genuine coin or just a reasonable facsimile. That called for another chat with the old coin expert. Morning, 
Star? I can always claim my finding two stiffs in one afternoon was pure coincidence. But I had a hunch the boys from Homicide would be skeptical, especially since the lieutenant had asked me about Morningstar. The gun looked exactly like the one I'd seen in Murrow's desk, but I figured it was worth a trip to Pasadena to make sure. I still can't seem to find a match. How did you get in here? Oh, didn't they tell you? I came to see you. No one told me. And no one would have let you in. I'm not supposed to have visitors. Hey, what sort of deal have you got here? Straight slavery or just a 10-year bond? I'm quite satisfied with my job, Mr. Marlowe. Mrs. Murdoch is not only my employer, she's the best friend I have. <laughs> you know, that's not saying much, seeing as she doesn't allow any competition. But to get to more immediate business... That's just how you got into this house. We've already discussed that. Let's not repeat ourselves. Especially on Mrs. Murdoch's time. You're not on her time. No? Didn't you get my wire? Wire? No, I haven't been back to my office since noon. What did it say? Just that you needn't go any further with the case because Mrs. Murdoch has recovered the Brasher to Bloom. I see. Well, she said you could keep her check, though, as payment in full for your services. Did she? You were right this morning when you said she was generous. Well, you should feel quite relieved. It's been a very profitable day for you. Oh, educational, too. And how about you, Miss Davis? Do you feel relieved? Me? Well, naturally, I'm glad Mrs. Murdoch... Well, of course you do. Getting the coin back meant everything to you. You're a happy girl now. All your problems solved. Please get out of here. You have no business here anymore. There's nothing to discuss. There's one thing more. Is this your gun? Well, is it? I don't know. Where'd you find it? I want it in a raffle at a church social. Is it yours? How do I know? You're trying to trick me. You may have taken it out of my desk. Give it to me. I'm not trying to trick you, and I didn't take it out of your desk. If it's mine, give it to me. Not until I know a lot more than I do about how it got where it did. Miss Davis, do you think I want to hurt you? No. What I'd like to do is help you. Do you believe me? Yes. Good. Now, I know this is going to sound kind of radical, but did it ever occur to you that it might make things easier if you told the truth occasionally? I can't. There are things I can't talk about. I... Ah, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, Leslie, you frightened me. Well, come in. Just the lad I want to see. I didn't say anything, Leslie. Not a word. What's the matter, Marlowe? Don't you know not to leave when you're not wanted? Miss Davis tells me your mother's recovered the doubloon. Yes. As it turns out, we really didn't need you. Well, you do now. You see, two men have been killed today. Two men directly connected with this business of the Brasher doubloon. Oh, no. Go on, beat it. Now stay here. Now, just a minute, Marlowe. This is my mother's house. And if Wouldn't anyone... you like to know who the two men were who were killed? Aren't you even just a little bit curious? Frankly, no. Murders happen every day. Well, whether you're interested or not, I am. As a result of all this, the cops are after me. You don't say. 
All I have to do, Murdoch, is tell the police what I know. Okay. If it means keeping our name out of it. I took the doubloon, Mr. Marlowe, to pay a debt. A uh, gambling debt? Perhaps. But the point is, my mother found out the coin was gone, so I had to get it back. What about the debt? Well, I pointed out to the gambler that it would scarcely be to his advantage to have me disinherited. That he might better wait a bit for his money. Fortunately, he agreed. And, uh, gave the doubloon back. Yeah. So you see, there's really nothing for you to concern yourself with further. Quite a simple story, really, isn't it? Yeah, so simple it smells. What did your mother say when she found out you had a gambling debt? Well, naturally, I didn't tell her that part of it. No, you wouldn't. Shh. Merle, do I hear that man Marlowe in there? Yes, Mrs. Murdoch. Well, send him in here. Uh, don't say anything about the gambling, huh, Marlowe? Not unless I have to. Well, Mr. Marlowe, must I come in there? You seem to be a hard man to get rid of. I'm going to be even harder than that until I get hold of a few facts around here. Perhaps it would be worth giving them to you just to see the last of you. Yes. First of all, what... What's wrong with Miss Davis? Is there anything wrong with her? Why does she live in this house in a constant state of terror? Aren't you fictionizing just a little? I might be. But what's she afraid of? And why isn't she allowed to have callers? By what right do you ask those questions? Has she been with you a long time? Five years. Ever since my husband's death. Why? Do you think Miss Davis is perfectly rational? Suppose we say that she's a very high-strung girl. Easily disturbed. Disturbed? That's a word they use about insane patients. Is it? So that's what she's so darn grateful about. You've kept her here instead of sending her to an asylum. Why is she easily disturbed? What's happened to her? I really don't see why I should tell you, but... Five years ago, Murrow was my husband's secretary. She happened to be present when he fell from the window of his office during the Rose Tournament Parade. It was a dreadful shock to a sensitive young girl. Since then, I've been taking care of her. She hasn't been well. Now, are you through prying into her affairs and mine? I'm not prying half as much as the police are going to when they trace the cause of two murders to this house. Leslie, didn't you have a date? I did, but if you need me here... Nonsense. Kiss your mother and run along. I'm very fond of my son. Very fond. And this business of Leslie's taking the brasher doubloon has grieved me deeply. Even though he was trying to do me a favor. <laughs> so that's what he told you, huh? Mr. Marlowe, you are treading on thin ice. Aren't we all? Merle! Yes, Mrs. Murdoch? See that Mr. Marlowe gets out of this house at once and don't talk to him. Don't worry. I'm not interested in listening to any more lies. How dare you speak to me like that? You haven't all three of you been lying your heads off. What's this? Give it to me. Not until those murders are cleared up. Let me know if any further ideas occur to you. I've already told you all that I know. Give it to me. You can call the police and tell them that I've got it. And that I won't give it back to you. Going to do that? No police, eh? You know, I don't blame you. I don't like them either right now. Because they think I know more about those murders than I've told them. Is that your reason too, Miss Murdoch? And yours, Miss Davis? You'll have to get that coin from him, Merle. How? That's entirely your own affair. But what can I do? Didn't you see the way he was looking at you? I want the doubloon back tonight. Otherwise, my responsibility for you is at an end. Capitalize on what you've got, child. It would have been no problem for me when I was your age. Something? 
Are you Mr. Marlowe? The same. What do you want? I should like to talk with you about the crash of the blue. about the uh, Reicher de Bloom? It belongs to me. Who are you? My name is Vanille. Rudolf Vanille. And you claim that the uh, Reicher de Bloom is yours, huh? Strictly speaking, it does not belong to me yet, but it will, as soon as certain arrangements have been accomplished. But they cannot be accomplished, however, until I locate the coin, and I think you know where it is. You were at Mr. Anson's apartment when he was, uh, when the unfortunate circumstance of his death was discovered. You still haven't told me why you claim to be the owner of a stolen coin. Stolen? <laughs> Hardly that. Borrowed would be a better word. Borrowed so that it could be exchanged for something of much greater value. What's the article the Brasher de Bloon is to be exchanged for? Mm, sorry, but I cannot tell you that. Well, what have you come here to tell me? That unless I have the coin in my possession sometime tonight, I, I shall be... I shall be in great danger. I'm not ordinarily a violent man, Mr. Marlowe, but I, under the circumstances, I have no other choice. You will please give me the brush of the blue. Oh, for the love of Mike. <laughs> Maybe you'd better just go ahead and shoot. My luck's gonna give out on me sometime anyway. I beg you not to joke. I'm okay. desperate. Okay, okay. But there comes a time when one gun more is one gun too many. I give up. Hey, this thing really sends you, doesn't it? Give it to me. Sure. Why so frantic, little man? I must have that coin tonight or... Or else you're going the way Anson and Morningstar did? Yes, but more than that, I cannot tell you. Well, I'll help you. You have something that's worth more than the coin to someone else, but less than that to you. Something that someone is desperately afraid of. Yeah, now what's more frightening than prison? I'll tell you what it is. When someone holds something over your head, constantly threatening you with it, threatening to expose or, or perhaps destroy you, it's blackmail. You give yourself away too easily, Mr. Benier. Now, whom are you blackmailing? Merle Davis? Why, she hasn't any money. I was reaching for my handkerchief. That is my wallet you have there. May I have it back, please? Not until I've looked it over. You're a movie cameraman? Answer when you're spoken to, Veneer. This card says you're a movie cameraman. I am. Um, I was. You're not now? No. What studio did you work for? Well, I'm asking you a question. No studio. When I came here from Germany ten years ago, I, I worked as a freelance newsreel cameraman. I sold my stuff to anybody who'd take it. 
So that's what you're using for blackmail. Something you photographed. What is it? You cannot make me say more. Even if you kill me. No one's gonna get this thing until I find out what I want to know. Good night. the side of the coin, I could tell he was a collector as well as a blackmailer. An interesting combination. But I could think of one that would interest the cops even more. A detective who hides a murder gun and $10,000 worth of stolen property. Yeah. There's a young lady upstairs. She said I was to let her in. Did she give her name? She gave a name, Miss Jones. Sounds familiar, but I can't place it at the moment. She said that uh, you were expecting her. Did she? Were you? Does it really make any difference, Mr. Shaw? Deep down inside, I mean. I gave myself even money, it'd be you. I, I suppose this must seem awfully forward of me. Well, it's certainly a change of pace. What do you have to drink? Well, what do you think I should have? Bourbon and plain water. Unless you're not thirsty. Would you like me to tell you why I came here? Yeah, then I can concentrate on the real reason. Well, you're not being very nice, Mr. Marlowe. But I suppose I can't blame you. I do owe you an apology. Forget it. I make an annual deduction on my income tax for unpaid apologies. How do you figure on getting me to give you the doubloon? By telling you the truth and then asking you for it. You better go easy on that whiskey, Miss Davis. Now, that sounded almost like a direct answer to a direct question. After you left tonight, I thought about what you said to me, about wanting to help me. There wasn't any reason for you to say that unless you liked me. You do, don't you? I like what I see. Ask me again when we're a little better acquainted. I like you very much. I've never felt so at ease with anyone so quickly. What about this phobia of yours? It's responding to treatment already. Night school is only for serious students, you know. The curriculum is more intensive. Take a deep breath. This may hurt a little. Now relax, all at once. Let's try once more. Like this. Try to really relax. All over. That's right. Good. We'll take a short recess. Oh, I don't think I need one. I do. Ready to start talking now? Talking? Want me to ask some questions? Okay. You were in old man Murdoch's office the day he fell out of the window? Yes. We were all there watching the parade. Mrs. Murdoch stepped out for a drink of water and... And he made a pass at you? He was always finding excuses to touch me. I hated him. 
I never stayed in his office any longer than I could help it. I pretended I was watching the parade. But the only thing I could think of was that he was standing there next to me. Well, he, he grabbed me. I can't talk about it, I just can't. Okay, okay, we'll skip it for now. Whose idea was it to hand me that story about Leslie getting back the doubloon? I don't know. He and his mother were in their office all afternoon. Then she told me to send you the telegram. You didn't ask any questions? I'm paid to do what I'm told. I didn't think it was any of my business. You weren't involved in any way. It was just something between your employer and her son. That's right. Well, then why did you tell me it was so important to you? Well, I... I knew Mrs. Murdoch suspected me of taking the doubloon. Well, the only way I could prove I didn't was if you found out who did. You were afraid you'd lose your job? Maybe even be arrested? Yes. And that's all there's to it. There's no connection between the doubloon and Mr. Murdoch's death? Oh, how could there be? Well, look, if you give me the coin, I'm sure Mrs. Murdoch will send you another check. I like the first offer better. I've always favored the broad definition of the truth. The one that mentions the whole truth. I don't know what else to tell you. Well, for a start, where does Rudolph Veneer fit into this business? Who told you about him? He did. But it wasn't enough to satisfy my curiosity. Well, looks like I'm around ahead of you. Mind if I get a refill? Might as well make up your mind there's only one way to get what you want. I have made up my mind, Mr. Marlowe. Please give me the doubloon. I knew I should have gotten a lock for that dresser drawer. That's my gun, isn't it? Give me the doubloon. You realize this have to put a strain on our personal relations, don't you? I was beginning to think you were fond of me. I am. I meant it when I said I liked you very much. <laughs> but that wouldn't stop me from shooting you. I want that coin desperately. I'm beginning to gather that. Unfortunately, I haven't got it. I don't believe you. Well, look out! Don't force me to shoot you, Mr. Marlowe. I really don't want to. That's one thing we see eye to eye about. Just empty your pockets and put everything over there on the coffee table. I told you I haven't got it. Now stand over there. And turn your back to me. Actually, I wouldn't carry it around with me. You did earlier. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to take your clothes off. Miss Davis. Keep your back turned. I asked you to start undressing, Mr. Marlowe. What about your back? Drop it over there. I should warn you, I don't wear an undershirt in the summer. <laughs> I can't go through with it. Don't move. <laughs> you never even bothered to check and see if the gun is loaded. <laughs> you know, I haven't used that gun in years. I don't even know if I've got the right cartridges for it. <laughs> You've just been playing a game with me? Oh, honey. Hey, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I guess it's my office gun that isn't loaded. I hate you. You're contradicting yourself again. You don't really hate me. You hate yourself. You know, that's what always happens when somebody succeeds in pulling a trick on you. But you really shouldn't feel too badly about it. After all, I've been involved in this sort of thing a lot longer than you have. Well, now that we've eliminated the other possibilities, 
what about trusting me? I'm going to have to revise my whole course. I never got progress like that with orthodox methods. Will you really help me? If I can. Look, that's the point I've been trying to make all day. But let's face the fact that this is a pretty serious business. There's a murder to find. Maybe two. I'm a murderer. If you're talking about old man Murdoch, forget it. You'll never really get well until you do. But I just can't. Mrs. Murdoch is always telling me to. She talks to me by the hour just trying to get me to forget. She ought to keep her fat mouth shut. Please don't talk about her that way. You really shouldn't. All right, all right. Let's forget about her, too. Now, why do you want the doubloon so much? Who do you want to give it to? Mr. Veneer. Veneer, eh? How long have you known him? Five years. I haven't known him very well. I was always afraid of him. But he never harmed you, did he? Well, only because Mrs. Murdoch paid him all that money. That's why I say you shouldn't talk that way about her. How much she paid him? $500 every month for five years. Ever since the day of the Rose Tournament Parade. And uh, Mr. Veneer has the pictures of it? Yes. But I think he exchanged them for the doubloon. He wants that more than anything. Yeah, I kind of sensed as much from my session with him. Look, I better take you home. Oh, I don't want to go back there. I'm afraid. Please let me stay here. Okay. I'll go over to my office and sleep on the couch. Oh, I don't want to be left alone. I'd much rather you stayed here, too. No, sweetheart. You'll find some pajamas in the dresser drawer, and... Why should I be telling you? You already know where everything is around here. Why do you insist on going? Look, we're still on the second lesson, baby. Let's not rush things. Is that the only reason? No, I'm not forgetting that whoever killed those two men today is probably after me now. So? You're still on the list of suspects. I felt better than I had all day. I was finally getting a few facts. I should have realized that might occur to somebody else. about coming to see me, yeah. You boys play kind of rough, don't you? Did you find it? Nope. That first Jim. Smart, aren't you? Right now, I don't feel so smart. Don't say that. You're smart. It's smart enough to give me that coin without the boys having to bounce you. They can't bounce me hard enough to get it from me because I haven't got it. He's lying. He had a decision. Hi, Snooker. You gonna tell us where it is? Uh -uh. Marlowe? I'm gonna give you a break. Hey, thanks. It might pay you to play ball with me. Yeah? How much might it pay me? It might pay you in time and in health. I seem to have heard this record somewhere before. But I just can't put a name to it. Don't say I didn't warn you. Close the door, Figaro. Where's the doubloon, Marlowe? I told you I haven't got it. Ask him who has it. Who's got it, Marlowe? Why don't you try Veneer? How'd he find out about Veneer? 
Don't ask me. Maybe you told him. Maybe he threw in with Veneer. That's it. Marlowe's got the evidence from Veneer himself, and now he wants to blackmail Mother. Shut up. This guy's not out. You're right. Let him have it, Figaro. That'll do. Put him on the couch. Had enough? Okay. Where'd you hear about Veneer? From Veneer. He came to me for the coin. Claimed it was his. Well, did you give it to him? No. But maybe... Maybe Leslie did. Well, that's what you've been up to, huh? I told you to bring it to us! Stop and prove! Oh, I told you kids are bad luck. I didn't give the coin of veneer. I didn't have it. It was at your house this evening. But you've had it. Your mother wired me she had it back. The wire's in my pocket. Dirty little liar! Come on, Peter! Come on, Peter! Come on, Peter! wine barrel in there. It wasn't the first time I'd slept in my office, but I can't remember ever getting less rest. The few times I did fall asleep, I'd find myself in that cozy little room down at headquarters while the cops collect autographs on type confessions and won't take no for an answer. Hello? What? Now, take it easy, kid. Give it to me again. Where are you? It's Mr. Veneer. He... Please come out here. 309 Rustic Road. Merle! Wait a minute, Merle! Hello? Hello? Mr. Marlowe! What happened? He's up here. Veneer? Yes. Yes, he's... Come, I'll show you. He's still warm. He was like that when I came in. The door was wide open. I didn't do it. Well, I wasn't a man. No man scratches up another man's arm. How long have you been here? About 15 minutes. No one answered the door and I, I just walked in. What did you come out here for anyway? To beg Mr. Veneer to give me the films. But he was already like that. Yeah. Well, those films have got to be found. It was like searching an overcrowded junk shop. The guy had been a collector, all right. He apparently collected whatever normal people throw out when they clean up their attics. Well, I guess that's it.
tell me something. Why has Mrs. Murdoch been willing to pay blackmail just to protect you? You know, a woman like her doesn't let go of that kind of sugar just to be breezy. She didn't want any scandal. She felt sorry for me. She knew it was an accident. I see. Well, let's take one more look in the living room. Nothing doing. Better wash up after that. I should wear gloves. Mr. Marlowe, I know you think I killed Mr. Veneer, but I didn't. Well, then it was Leslie. Because I found your gun beside Morningstar's body. The fingerprints on it must be his. But Leslie's just a child. He's a pretty dangerous child, then. House. There's a full roll up there. You're going to turn Leslie over to the police. Why not a piece of murder? Look! Hey, this is the Rose Turner Parade. Give me that, you Police headquarters? Lieutenant Breeze, homicide. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Marlowe. I've got news for you. Yeah, I'm giving you Anson's murder. Better send someone out to the Lucky Club and pick up Blair and Prue. Oh, and, uh, Lieutenant, I hate to mention this, but I just found another body. I didn't kill Veneer. The last house in Nickel I Canyon. Didn't. Please believe me, I didn't kill him. Don't you know that? You mean this hunk of celluloid ties into three killings? Four. Four? Have you found another stiff you haven't told me about? This one was before I started collecting him. Old man Murdoch. Oh, for the love of Mike Marlowe. That was cleared up years ago. Look, let's stop all this nonsense. You just hand over your suspects. I'll take them down to headquarters and I'll sweat it out of them. Keep your shirt on, will you? I promised you the murder of Anson and Morningstar, didn't I? Yes. Here's his confession, signed and witnessed. Young Murdoch, the kid. Say, how did you get this? I've got his fingerprints on the gun I found beside Morningstar's body. That you found? You've been holding back vital evidence? Okay, okay. Here it is. Sit down. Now, you listen to me, Marlowe. You're in a serious situation. You know the rap I could get you for this? Sure I do. But give me a chance to run these films, will you? No. I don't know why I should. Who are you covering up for, anyway? Where's this girlfriend of yours? She'll be here. Well, she'd better be. And this better be good, Marlowe. Because I've got enough on you to keep you in the Bastille until you're 80. Look here, Captain. I got my rights. I demand to know what this is all about, what I'm charged with. I ain't a captain, and the charge will be accessory to two murders. You guys sit down before you get knocked down. Sit over here, Miss Davis. All right, Marlowe, let's get on with this. Well, Lieutenant, the irony in this whole case is that the Brasher de Bloom was never anything but a medium of exchange. The only thing that could get these films away from Veneer. Leslie wanted the films to give to Blair and Prue, to pay his gambling debt. They were going to use them to blackmail his mother. Uh, she's a very rich woman. It would have been a steady income for them. Like an annuity. Of course, Mrs. Murdoch didn't know that. 
She thought Leslie was trying to get the films for her. She said if I didn't get it back for her, she'd disinherit me. I received your message, Mr. Marlowe. Yes, of course. Come in, Mrs. Murdoch. You've come for your doubloon. I told you you could have it as soon as I found out who killed Anson and Morningstar, didn't I? Well, here you are. I'll take that. That coin belongs to me. You give it to me. That coin is important evidence. I'll take charge of it. And did you find out who committed the murders? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Your son, Leslie, has just confessed to both murders. Really, Leslie? Isn't that carrying gallantry a little too far? He's trying to protect Merle, of course. Poor little Merle. You must tell him the truth now, dear. About... You mean about... How you black out at times and never remember later what you did. Yes. Yes, it, it's true, I do. Did you kill Veneer, Miss Davis? I don't know. I don't know anymore what I did. Poor little darling. You can see for yourselves how she is. That's why I've taken care of her all these years. It won't work, Mrs. Murdoch. We've got Leslie's fingerprints on a gun. Oh, I've had enough of this. You're all coming down to headquarters. Oh, be reasonable, Lieutenant. These pictures of the Rose Tournament are conclusive evidence. Yes. And if you had any doubt as to Miss Davis's guilt... No, no, I, I don't want to see them. I couldn't stand it. Try to be brave, dear. They had to come out someday. And it wasn't your fault, you just weren't responsible. Come sit beside me, Merle, dear. Hit the switch back of the door, will you, Webb? Veneer is a newsreel cameraman who was photographing the Rose Tournament Parade from a point on Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. Now watch closely. As he was photographing this float, he heard shouts. Something was happening in the building across the street. See that man pointing? Veneer quickly changed to a closer lens. Now watch that high window. There, my dear, don't cry. You know I'll do all I can for you. Spangler, you haul the rest of them down the wagon. I'll take the girl. Not so fast, Lieutenant. Sit down, all of you. It was too far away for you to see anyone clearly. <laughs> These are the films that Veneer used for blackmail, all right. But they don't prove anything. Now, here's an enlarged version of the same films. Hit the switch back there, Gibby. As you see, they show in detail the figure in the window. Here we have Mrs. Murdoch in the very act of giving her husband the old heave-ho. Lights! All right, I killed him. He was unfaithful to me and he deserved to die. You killed Veneer too, didn't you? Yes, he lied to me. He told me that my son was in a plot to help blackmail me. He was. Veneer told you the truth. You're lying. My son loves me. He'd never do anything to take my money away from me. This is just a plot to get my money. All these years you let me think I did it. You made me think I was insane. Yes, I did. You'll never steal another woman's husband. Uh, but I've had my revenge. Just look at you. You shiver and shudder every time a man so much as lays a finger on you. What man would fall in love with a lunatic? Get her out of here, Lieutenant. Come on, get, take her out of here, boys. All right, Spangler, let's go. I'll, I'll need a statement from you two in the morning. We'll be there. Okay. The place could use a little fresh air. Biggest crowd I ever drew here. Maybe I should have charged admission. Are you all right? I, I guess so. It's just that I've lived with the Murdoch family so long. And now... And now there won't be any more family left. You know, that's one shortage nobody's going to complain about. Hello. Yeah, speaking. Twenty-five a day and expenses. But that depends upon the particular job whether I take it. Sure, any time in the morning is fine. Eleven o'clock is great. Yeah. This is Mr. Marlowe's secretary. I'm afraid he's forgotten he's still on another case. 
Oh, not till the beginning of the week. Oh, I'm sorry. He couldn't possibly be free until then. All right. Hey, what is it? Well, you said you were taking both cases, Mrs. Murdoch's and mine. Mine isn't solved yet. It will be. I got a feeling you're going to graduate with honors. Mm -hmm. 